I'm in my first bit here, should all know me, and I'm doing a talk about unit test stuff. Um, well, uh, I'm from Jetsk at the moment and fairly active as application manager, so I have a little bit of experience in this area. And, uh, well, uh, I didn't want to hold this talk, so uh, the first slide is about not holding to. Uh, well, start with the outline. Uh, I just like about not holding talks, uh, a short introduction to the queuing process, what we could change, and a uh, little slide I just did a few hours ago because some things were missing and I wanted to just put some in and we'll discuss them later. Okay, not holding talks, very important. <laughs> um, it's not a good idea to know people who have a schedule, so just run away. Um, I gave up after like five minutes, and uh, that's why I'm standing here. And as always, don't look like you know something. Now, the real talk. Uh, we need a new maintainer process. Um, there was a presentation at DevConf which was quite good and described why we need this com complex process and complex checks. And uh, if anyone, anyone doesn't know about it, he should just fetch the video and everything is okay. Uh, just a few main points. We need new people who want to help Debian because all people drop out and uh, the distribution is growing all the time. Uh, on the other hand, it's not... Because of who it me. Um, we need... Uh, and we can't uh, give out accounts just because we want, because it's creating security problems on our machines, which isn't good. And uh, we have quality assurance problems because not everybody who wants to help really knows what he's doing. It's not a problem, they can learn, but we can't give them upload permissions instantly. Uh, the last point is a bit complicated. I personally think it's important to keep the number of developers relatively low, so we have at least, a sh uh, well, we should know everybody who is working in the project. Not personally, but you should have an idea who this person is, what he's doing, and uh, probably should have already talked with him via IRC or maybe. It's my personal idea of the project, but that's probably not what most people think. Okay. Um, security process. It's fairly easy. We have interested persons, they meet already existing developers, they advocate them, and after like four months at the moment, they get an application manager. Uh, that's not planned actually. Uh, it should be possible to give them application managers very fast. Uh, well, uh, I shouldn't do that all the time. We um, aim to ensure that people have the same philosophical background as we have. So there's a part of the process which just checks uh, knowledge about free software and whatever is related to that. Uh, and the other part is checking that they are actually able to help the project. That's not so important in one respect because it's uh, just needed to uh, give a reasoning to give them, a, them an account, but um, why should we give accounts for people who don't help us? It's useless. Um, after the application manager has finished the checks, uh, the report is created, uh, Frontest checks it, which is not very useful at the moment, the account manager checks it a few months later and creates an account after that. Well, not the account manager at the moment because it's not able to create accounts. Um, yeah, uh, the actual checks are not very good in my opinion. We have a lot of questions. Most of them are used to do like, what would you do if? Which is not very interesting, doesn't help very much, and just shows that people are able to read the documentation. No, uh -huh. it shows that uh, they are not, but uh, well, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are curiously there are enough people who are not able to read the documentation. So uh, it's 
has its advantages. Um, there are a few tasks added in the last 18 months or so. Um, the Mantage thing is fairly old. I added uh, the fix an RC bug and do some work and prepare an NMU and some stuff like that to see that people are actually able to perform their duties as developer. Um, the last thing is something most applicants don't know, but application managers are supposed to look what look at other work, not only what uh, at the packages that are submitted to the application manager, but also on uh, to see what they are doing in the BTS and how they are interacting with other dev developers and users and bug submitters and stuff like that. Um, it's not included in the report at the moment, which I'm which is not very good, I think, but uh, I'm planning to change it in the next time. Uh, there will be a quite complicated uh, change in the next month, nobody knows about it, but even Ganev is looking a bit irritated at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm front estimated what I want. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, we can go to the next slide probably. Uh, yeah, if you want. Do you have that there the, the new kind of. Uh, yeah, we have. Um, that, that they have to we have. The activities there yeah, we have a um, uh, dark instance, a uh, uh, Debian archive script instance uh, on one of Kanev's machines, but it's not mandatory to use it, and uh, only a few application managers actually use it. I'm not sure how many, and uh, most of them aren't active anyway. So I just see the reports after they were submitted and only 8 or 9 people have submitted reports in the last 6 months, which Mark, is not very good. Mark, yeah? from my, my point of view, uh, seeing what, what's built on that, from the archive, we have about 1 or 2 packages a week, which is what we mm, yeah. but uh, this sometimes corresponds, less, sometimes more. corresponds to the fact that uh, uh, half of the applicants in the process at the moment are uh, processed by three application managers, which are Jörg, me, and uh, Craig Small, who's doing less work than earlier, but still does quite a lot. Not very really good, but he does a lot of work. Uh, so, the advantages of the queuing process. We have uh, the problem that many people are interested in being associated with Debian because it's cool and everybody should have a cool thing in their life and a cool, cool email address and stuff like that. And uh, the very long process filters these people. They just drop out after like eight weeks or so and got re get rejected after some time. Um, the questions at the moment lead to reading documentation, reading documentation, reading documentation. After some time, people learn. It's weird, but take some time and they understand what we want. From he to hear from them, and we hope that they actually apply the procedure safely. Okay, um, yeah, we have also a long time to educate people in the skills part before they get upper permissions, which means we can ask them to do sponsoring tasks like checking other people's packages. Um, and MUs are very important because. Um, Daily quality assurance needs an MOOs a lot, and uh, I want that new maintainers invest time in helping to assure the quality of the whole distribution. <coughs> okay, next slide. What are the problems of the queuing process? It sucks up a lot of time, and it's lost. We have a lot of answers which get with the report and are uh, lost after that and we will not see them again. This is obviously not very good because a lot of time is invested in writing them and checking them and discussions about them and it's not very good. Uh, this hits people who are very experienced and are application managers and so so we need that time. And people who are very motivated and want to join the project and we also need those people. So it's a bit uh, well, it's not really good to waste their time. Um, the consequence is change checks to be based on actual tasks. That means doing stuff that helps Debian instantly, not 
after they got the account, but like in 10 minutes. So, what can we do to use such a task based chain? I've started this with two applicants. Um, one of them is not very active, I hope that will change. And the other one is Ross, Russ Alberry. Some of you some of you should know him. He's quite active on Debian release at the moment with one of the tasks I gave him. And uh, well he's, he's a maintainer of in so No, he's yeah, he's upstream maintainer of a new server and uh, Kerberos and stuff like that. He's fairly active in open source. So he's anyway uh, an applicant who would join instantly, but well, I can use him. Uh, okay, so what can applicants do? Uh, they can help maintainers to um, clean up the bug tracking system. Most packages, uh, larger packages, have a lot of unchecked, unchecked bugs. Uh, they should, all bugs should be classified. That's uh, reflected in the changes in the BTS recently. We have a new overview which shows uh, bugs ordered in categories like uh, patched and uh, or patched provided, um, won't fix, uh, confirmed, unreproducible, and uh, unclassified. And that's where new maintainers can help without getting further permissions. They can look at bug reports, check if they apply, um, see if they can reproduce them, and perhaps find um, a solution, a patch, whatever. Um, next point are WMPP bugs. We have a lot of them, most are useless. We have uh, requests for packages that are two years old or more, uh, for packages that are long dead upstream, are not developed anymore and actually not needed anymore. So it could be an idea to ask new maintainers to go like check 15 of the older bugs and uh, close them, tag them, whatever, retitling them. And, um, well, I'm keeping this very short, sh short because I have further slides about it. Um, they can do sponsored QA uploads and NMUs. We also need that all the time because Debian is fairly buggy. And what Russ doing at the moment is transition support and management. He's uh, asking maintainers to coordinate and is filing bugs to document what the situation is. And uh, this is actually something that the uh, release team is doing most, most of the time, but um, they all, always need help. So we could use active uh, new maintainers for that too. So what can they do to, yeah, I've already did that one, <laughs> just on the side, but uh, well, we just skipped. Um, yeah, the purpose of this task is more or less that they can show to use the control bugs, that they can communicate with maintainers, with bug submitters, with other developers, and stuff like that. Cleaning up WMPP shows the same skills and knowledge about QA processes because it's important to understand that you can't just close uh, intent to adopt or so because uh, we actually need maintainers and uh, it sounds fairly dumb that I'm saying it, but I have seen people who have done that. And so that's not very good. Okay. It shows social skills, especially that, because uh, there are many intentional packages by people who have no time or not, not enough. Um, they don't know enough about Debian to provide proper packages, don't find sponsors, and you need people who communicate this problem and help them either to <coughs> learn enough to provide the packages or drop the effort. Okay, next slide. Uh, yeah, it's, um, we need people who go through our packages and find packages that need help, which means uh, often packages, packages which have a lot of RC bugs, a lot of important older bugs and uh, find a way to solve their problems. That's either um, uploading a new version as NMU or QA upload or removing them or asking for a new maintainer. There are plenty of people that, that refuse or that are against the idea of uh, non-maintainers. I know. I'm not confident. I'm 
and a lot of work. Mm -hmm. well, um, it's, uh, well, we have to talk about it anyway tomorrow, about QA uplift and NMOs by non-maintainers and external contributions. But um, I believe we can use every help we can get. And uh, it's, it's not always enough to just provide patches in the BTS, but sometimes you just need someone who's caring about the package and preparing a new upload. Because sometimes no developer is interested in a package, but some non-maintainers are. Uh, I think the, the main, the, the, uh, the, the important part is that uh, the sponsor is aware that uh, if something uh, goes wrong with the NMU, he's, he's, also, responsible. he's also responsible for fixing it because he has uploaded it. And yeah. uh, of, co of course, if the, if the uploader later says, oh no, I, I only sponsor that, that's, that's not yeah. okay. That's so not the okay. important part is, part, uh, I think the import, important part is that the sponsor is aware that he's also responsible for the NMU. Yeah. Not um, just the, uh, as the preparer itself. <laughs> Uh, I have some impression that some people in the project have gotten the whole idea of sponsoring from. It's not, I just check a package and upload it and that's it. They are responsible for this upload. Every bug they introduce with this upload is their responsibility. They can forward it to the applicant or a new maintainer or interested person who is doing the packaging, but if that person isn't answering, they have to fix it. It's their work. And uh, some people who are going uh, over Debian mentors and just uploading stuff without actually checking it or caring about uh, package enough to be able to check it. Um, okay. Uh, here, we have. Yes.
people who do this in the new maintainer application are probably a good example for people who will join the release team in a few months. I'm very sure that uh, Ross Albury will do it in the next year. Okay, um, yeah, after this. Um, disadvantages of this um, idea. Uh, we can't use it for documentation, new maintainers, because all the tasks are listed are very concentrated on them. Uh, well, there are other possibilities like translation and coordination of translations that are also not covered by this. Um, most application managers need to learn more about product insurance. It's a sad fact that most of our application managers are not very informed about Deepin's internal processes. I see a lot of uh, really bad application reports and some application managers just don't know what's, uh, well, what has changed since they've learned about Debian. Um, that's a big problem anyway with uh, the normal system or the task-based checks uh, because, um, well, even the questions show the problems that they can't help to educate new maintainers. Um, we need something. Uh, we need to do something about it. But uh, we have no alternatives as application managers, and so we just have to do with them. And wait until we have enough resources to replace them, or ask them to um, well read about Debian's policies and um, come back later. It's a problem. Uh, it needs a lot more time for application managers. Um, the few uh, questions are very easy. You go to a list of questions, see the answers, okay, 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 fix me, fix me, fix me, it's very easy. You can like uh, do a complete application in uh, four hours or so and uh, are done with it. Um, with such a task-based check system we need to invest a lot of time. We need to find tasks, we need to um, check what the applicant is doing and help them. We can't uh, believe that they just know how to work with it. And it's it's uh, just an educational program. Um, yeah, that's what I Okay. And the last part is application record, uh, no, yeah. reports. Uh, reports are becoming less comparable because we have individual tasks and can't say he. Uh, couldn't answer this question, and this one, this one is performing a lot worse than another applicant. It uh, creates a higher load on application managers and front desk and the account manager. Okay, um, yeah, next slide, I don't have that much time. Um, Excuse me, I yes. see another disadvantage. Uh, I see another disadvantage of your procedure. The procedure works great. Right? Uh, I haven't asked you, sorry. Sorry. I see another disadvantage. Just, just, just tell it. Uh, the disadvantage is when you find or you sponsor a package from the upstream and when the upstream want to be involved in Debian, mm -hmm. it does not necessarily want to know anything about QA. He is focusing on this package. Well, does he need an account then? He could just use sponsor afterwards. Uh, I'm not for giving accounts out to everyone. It's definitely a problem we have that there are too many developers at the moment. People who would uh, just need like five uploads a year and everything would be okay. And uh, there are plans to remove uh, inactive uh, developers as far as I know. That's yes, the application uh, account managers area, so he should come up with that. Okay, um, we could discuss this later. I think I would uh, want to go through all my slides and then come back. Okay, um, advantages of uh, check-based um, and end checks. It becomes a lot more interesting. You don't have to go through a list of questions and the gen, uh, then just quote from the policy or developers' reference. Um, it attracts other kinds of applicants. Um, at the moment we have, okay, at the moment we have um, a lot of applicants who are just um, 
interested in um, yeah, uh, yeah, getting an account and don't have the needed technical skills but know how to answer questions. And on the other hand, we have people who uh, are interested in helping Debian but are not able to concentrate on, I don't know, 40 questions for uh, PMP and uh, 35 for TNS at the moment. So uh, we should change that a bit to attract another kind of person. Um, real tasks help to educate people. We don't need um, a whole educational program, but it helps to just give them some advice how to process uh, their tasks and uh, how to help inactive maintainers or stuff like that. It's better to do it uh, with real tasks than what if what if uh, something would happen, what would you do? It's just better. Um, and the best bit is everything helps Debian. If you do a QA upload, it helps Debian. It's no problem. That's just a wonderful thing about it. Okay, um, that's almost my last slide. Um, consequences for the QA team. Um, we need, we, um, need to accept help from outsiders. This means we need uh, to document some tasks better. We need um, to allow people to just drop in and help and uh, change a lot of things to just make them accessible for other people. Um, that means, for example, we need to give read access to some tools like uh, medicine <coughs> or MA history or stuff like that to non-maintainers. At the moment they are kept on uh, project machines and are uh, only accessible through shared access and non-maintainers don't have that. So we should, I don't know, um, for um, creating a web interface for all these tools it's uh, fairly easy. You just do a CGI with an input, fi input field and uh, give out the output. Um, I believe we have a medicine CGI at the moment. You have like, no, no, okay. that we have a medicine light that you can run on your own machine. Yeah, but yeah. it's yeah. not. Uh, it's and not. We have packages standing out which lacks about half a day or a day. And I, yeah. and I developed this week a web front end for medicine. That isn't official yet. Yeah. Yes, but the, I think when you develop a new frontend, you should ask the question if that information is uh, is supposed to be open to the whole world or just to people in the new development queue. If, if you want just available for new no, developers, you, you maybe uh, think about creating an alias project or something like that and adding new maintainers to no. that project. No, I actually want to give free access to almost all tools we have. But okay, so there are tools that seem like MIA history is a bit difficult because yes, of personal MIA. data. I think no, it's not personal data. I don't understand why it's personal data if you give free access to, uh, I don't know, 900 developers. Yeah. At the moment, 900 people can just go in the... Yeah, it's limited to a group of 900 people and a few millions who have internet yeah. access. But I don't see a difference. I see. I know it makes a difference. Because we are but all part of the project, so we have access to the project data. Have, has anyone actually looked at the stuff in MIA? Yes. You yeah. did, and you did. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, six people or so. Um, it's uh, mostly uh, not very personal. Yeah, and mostly, but yeah, yeah, it's we, yeah and it can get in the accident. There's a problem yeah. about uh, doing it. Um, without um, asking for permissions. Uh, we, should, uh, we shouldn't open our archives, but we should try to do, uh, if we write mails in the future, we should just ask if we can pub publish it. It helps. Ask who? But the next thing. Yeah, yeah, Mark, I think there's a lot of tools we really could try to open. Then I would say medicine, for example, is something we definitely could open to the world. Because as the information is public, it's just medicine is, in my opinion, is the nicest tool to access it this way. Yeah. So that would be cool, of course. But there's other things uh, I think we really need to be very careful about. I think something like MIA, a history, 
is more problematic. And I think, but I think what's important is we should start with the easy ones. And I don't have any issue to say, oh, I'm your application manager. If you need some output from this tool, please tell me, and I will just send it back to you. Well, for example, with, with, as a start to people who have an application manager. At the moment, we have like four months of time before you get an application manager, even after you apply. We need to cope with that. But I think I think that it's, it's a bug something else in that uh, uh, approach. The bug is not that it's a... Yeah, <laughs> sure. Okay, I, I, I'm it's just told that it's coming to be ended. Yeah, okay. We'll... Yeah, I have an example here. Yesterday I saw uh, at the end a few lines about the maintainer because he was wondering who uh, he was and what he was doing inside the VM. Mm. And I give him the answer because he asked him. Yeah. So we can do it on IRC, well, for example, if yeah. somebody asks you. But if you give the information out anyway, why don't create web? No, because, because it's different. But we really should just, okay. Well, we Mark, should proceed and then yeah, we discuss yeah. it later, okay? Yeah. And then we want to, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, the last uh, thing is actually the QA team should provide a list of tasks that can be done in the application process. Things that can be checked, like uh, we have, we know uh, this package needs help, and uh, or we have a list of packages that need help, and um, we have uh, transitions that are pending. We have uh, people who need to be tasked if they're really MIA or just not active at the moment, but will come back in two months or so, and um, we should make this more open at the moment. It's very complicated at the moment to get information. It's uh, spread all over the QA pages, uh, you have to look there and there and there. It should change. Okay. So, uh, well, let's not do this. Right. I'm done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Can you take over for the package Well, um, <laughs> that's uh, one of the main problems I have at the moment. I want to move away from questions, but I have no idea how to do this for translation or documentation people. Why? Well, I, I need to do that. Uh, they have just other talk, uh, tasks, or not? Uh, yeah, but. Uh, the documentation tasks. Uh, I have five so templates, so the documentation tasks are usually much harder. I think it's easier in a way because people yeah. applying for uh, documentation, new maintainership will almost always be active already yeah. and they will always always already have a track record uh, yeah. in that area so you can just take what they have already done yeah. as the task really but uh, which we, is what happened in my case yes but, but i would like to add that, that we have a problem once the key once the key is inside the query you can upload a package uh, even if you yeah. have no no problem so it's a problem it's, it's a, a problem. problem people don't know anything about kiddish uploads I don't know anything about package uploads. Yes, but, yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. but you know, yeah, the, the project trusts trust that he won't be uploading uh, things that he doesn't know about. That's why I think uh, the current TNS and PMP part is very important for people going that route because at least they will have the, the policy and procedures in their head and they will know where to go uh, with questions if they do decide they want to uh, Start <coughs> you, you, you have to trust people in the project a bit to, to be sensible about using the rights they have. Although on the other hand, I have said before that I wouldn't mind personally if uh, there would be a split in uh, what the rights people yeah, get. Uh, I think uh, uh, or trust or... Yeah. Or like if we move to, to a more, more task-based situation where, where we are asking people to learn about uploading if they want to. Yeah. And then we, we get all the people that want to do documentation by just like checking the documentation translations that they have done. So what do we do with those top two types of people when they get to the to the end part? Do we separate a new key ring to, for people just doing uh, maintain, uh, documentation uploads or we don't allow uploads at all and we just like put those people able to access the machine to get information about Madison or to get about information or or what? Well, uh, but, but the basic question is first, what is the Debian developer, I think. <laughs> uh, the question is, are, is the Debian developer first a mark of sign that he's a part of our community? And then they have some tasks that can do, for example, upload packages? Uh, or is it, oh, a Debian developer is a person who can upload packages? 
So, but I personally would, would consign and say, okay, a, de a developer that is, is somebody who is part of our community, who has voting rights, who can access our machines. And that's trust. Uh, and, and of course, as part of the community, we trust him as, as being a, a proper a good citizen of our community. Something uh, like that. Uh, and if you, if you say that, then you can say, okay, and some of them have additional, an additional privileges, I would say, or additional tasks to do. Some of them, for example, have, uh, have the right to remove packages. Others have the right to upload packages. So, uh, some of them have access to, um, to, to, to boxes that other people have don't have access to, for example, to Murphy. I don't have access to Murphy and I don't mind at all. Uh, yeah, so, so, so I really think we should say we have the Debian hearing which is the people with us. Uh, some of them, of course, it's, it's the beginning, probably most of them have the right to upload packages. But, uh, but uh, well, if somebody says he's doing documentation, he won't be added. And, and if the lag is like, oh, I want to upload a package, he goes to some additional, let's say, package, ta package task skills or whatever, and then after that can upload. What but, I said just now about not having any skills in the packaging is, is nonsense, of course, because within the context of Debian installer, I know what I'm doing, and I, <laughs> can, can <laughs> yeah, I, I would never start a new package, yes. uh, especially not a library uh, <laughs> package. <laughs> but I mean that, for example, if, if a person doesn't go to the philosophy and procedures, mm -hmm. and then it becomes a DDM, uh, the Debian Documentation Maintainer. Mm -hmm. So, is it a person of the project? Does it have voting rights? Does it have... As a main philosophy, it's a core part of the project. Yes. Anyone yeah. needs to go to PNP, so there's no way around yeah. it. There's no way around it. There's only a way around it. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. But, but then he, he becomes a, a Debian documentation maintainer or whatever we call it. And what is he? Is he a Debian developer with voting rights? Or is he just a documentation maintainer that can have has access to machines? That's another question that has to be answered to you. And as a, an applicant manager, I had a problem with uh, a French translator. He, he did translation in the past. He was thinking that he had the right to have a DPN address, email address. He goes to join, he feel a task in here and a philosophy and procedure at least. Then I took the application and I said to him, no, you are, he was an inactive, completely inactive for more than one year and the only rational reason to reject him was that no, I can't insert your key in the queue because you, you have the possibility to uh, upload. That's, you, that's you, a wrong reason. That, yes, that, that, that is a wrong reason. That's true, but he, he had, he had a, a, a work a lot in, a, in the past and if, if he was inactive for a year, that's a good reason to reject him. Yeah, but that's uh, rejecting him because yeah, he... Yes, but he was pretending that, you know, it, mm. he was uh, threatening me, in fact. Mm -hmm. Sorry, <laughs> but that's true. Hey, but first, thank you for speaking. So we have a huge plan where you use that program. Thank you for speaking to the O man. It's not a line, it's a privilege. Five more minutes for discussion. Okay. Yeah. I don't think we should talk uh, too much about documentation people uh, uploading graphic packages. Yeah, because it can just be the other way around. We have I like about documentation developer a year, so it's not worth discussing it at the moment. Yeah. Um, and I've already asked Franz if he would do um, application management for the next person who's interested in doing it. Um, he will say he would think about it, but he said launch. So, uh, I'm but I should maintain that we should come back to things, and I don't know anything about it. So, 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 yeah. I think we should come back to the rest of the It's always a problem. I think the real reason why I got in very easily in the end is because I showed a broader interest than just yeah. documentation. I think that was a, a large part of the decision. You really want to have people in the project who are interested in Debian yeah. and in working on Debian and uh, getting Debian further. Uh, you don't want to keep them out because they don't know uh, C or whatever and and Those people are robotics and no idea No, I, I, I know that, but they have probably better background than I do uh, a lot of the time yeah. I think one general uh, goal of the NF process is to check whether people are generally interested yeah. So, and if they are able to show that they're interested in packaging, documentation or whatever we can trust them that they do all reasonable things and that we don't have to discuss too much about whether they will abuse things. We should enable people to do stuff. One of the problems when you uh, sort of use the labor of 
new maintainers to, to propel Debian forward yeah. is that you sort of you run the danger of exhausting them. Yeah, but at the moment we ask them to answer stupid questions. I understand. I mean, it's using uh, them in another way. I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. so I guess so so we use them in a way which helps us. So middle ground is, is probably appropriate, but you should always bear in mind that when uh, you ask people to do a lot of things, and then you reward them with official Debian membership, and then they might become inactive. Uh, we have the same problem at the moment. I believe uh, you have tracked most of your applicants. How many are missing nowadays? 20%? 25%? Um, I think uh, that is a real problem. Yeah, but yeah, no, it's a problem. But, uh, but, uh, but the, the, real, the real thing is that if uh, the task that uh, he described exhausts you, you're not right for them yet. Yeah, it's, if, it's, you're, it's, <laughs> if you're exhausted by doing a bit of work, and I don't want people to, to work like uh, 10 hours a week for uh, 6 weeks, I want them to do a few things to show it that they are able to do it. Okay, so, 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 so Elder Martin looks like I should so, say the two final sentences. Um, so, but you said something that I really want to, uh, to, to keep or to, to take up, and you said we should make a list of, of possible small tasks that yeah. we could give uh, applicants. I think that's a very, very good idea because there's very often they say, oh, that's a very small thing that should be done, but uh, what the, for whatever reason I don't have time or whatever to do it. And we should just keep the things somewhere so that we can try to get them done. Okay. Yeah, I noticed this problem when I searched a task for us. He needed something to do, but I didn't know what I should ask him to do. Uh, so I went around and asked Ada and Steve and uh, release mention people that I think I haven't asked you. No, no. I would have. So, uh, I told him to make this not the documentation part. The task is currently lying on me. Well, but it's a task. Maybe that's too big for him. Okay. Um, but we need to concentrate the list of tasks. Yeah. Yeah. Discussion, yeah. discussion, discussion later at barbecue. Yeah. Harry will do more discussion at barbecue. In about four we minutes, we work. proceed with with some hard part. Okay. Uh, about, uh, no, 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 no